Welcome back. So today we are going to discuss uh, mean value first order second moment method that we started in our last class. So when we uh, deal with the design, we have capacity and demand. And then we have already discussed that in the deterministic framework, we fixed the value of capacity and we also fix the value of demand and thereby we calculate the factor of safety. However, when we consider uncertainty, you end up with this kind of PDF for capacity as well as demand. Now, if you look at the mean value of capacity and demand, obviously, the mean value of capacity in this case is more than demand and therefore, if we use mean value as our design point, then we always end up with a safe design because the factor of safety is always more than 1. However, the moment we consider uncertainty, then the capacity can take any value defined by this green line, while the demand can take any value defined by this pink line. Now, obviously, under this situation, we have a scenario where the demand can be more than capacity, which leads to failure. In fact, that is what is marked by the vertical arrow. This point demarcates that the capacity on the left hand side governed by this green line is less than the demand which is on the right hand side of this vertical arrow. Now, in this format obviously, capacity and demand they are uncorrelated. So, the question that we are going to investigate how to evaluate the reliability or probability of failure in this case. Now, we can easily conclude that it is the area under this two curves that is the common area defined by this vertical arrow dictates the probability of failure. So, how to estimate that? We just first redraw these two curves showing the common area in this new figure. We then first consider the demand curve and then at a distance d from the origin, we consider a differential strip and then we wish to estimate what is the probability that d will follow within this small strip and that we mark by a1. Obviously, this we can calculate using the probability density function of demand and then what we do, we basically integrate this curve and find out the area under this curve within this differential element and that we mark as a1. Then obviously, our interest is to have a design where the probability of C that is the capacity is more than the demand. That means, we will have capacity which is on the right side of this small strip and that will ensure always the safety or reliability we can estimate that. So, what is the probability that C will be greater than D? We can easily estimate from D to infinity if we integrate the PDF of C, we get a2 in this case, which ensures capacity is always more than demand. Now, we define reliability for this design, which is dr and this is nothing but the product of these two area that we have estimated in terms of a1 and a2. So, we have dr is nothing but a1 times a2 and that using the expression we already have, we can estimate. So, what is the total reliability that we can easily integrate this function dr over the complete domain and then obviously, the complete domain defined by this d demand curve is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, if we integrate this expression, we can find out what is the reliability for this case. Now, obviously, we can rewrite this expression within third bracket as 1 minus minus infinity to d f c of c d c. It comes from the fact that total area under the PDF is always 1. So, we can reformat this third bracketed term into the final expression of R. So, if we sum up, we have capacity as well as demand defined by the PDF and once we know the PDF of capacity and demand, then we can use this final expression to evaluate what is the reliability. So, obviously, if we take an example, say cantilever beam in this case, we have a point load at the free end, 
So, you can define the capacity which comes from the cross section and material property and then demand due to this load that arises in terms of either displacement or stress or any other internal force and then we can estimate the reliability and also once we estimate reliability we can evaluate what is the probability of failure which is 1 minus reliability. And in fact, the expression for probability of failure we can simplify further and this final expression which is very handy it is minus infinity to plus infinity f d of d times capital F c of d dc. So, effectively to estimate the probability of failure associated with this design we first need to define the underlying PDF for capacity and demand and then once we know that we can estimate the probability of failure. However, in reality this capacity and demand they have multiple variables involved within it and therefore, this individual probability density function actually in reality is a multivariate joint distribution that we need to estimate for capacity as well as for demand, which not always readily available and in fact, for actual structure which involves multiple variables and their analysis also becomes complex, this estimation of joint distribution itself is really challenging. So, if we for example, consider a building and then if we consider a component of this building which may be a beam or column or a slab, then for that the joint distribution, the multivariate distribution defining capacity as well as demand is very difficult to estimate. In fact, in most of the cases for complete structure, we use finite element analysis and that makes even the process more difficult. Due to this reason, we need to investigate for alternate solution, so that we can estimate the probability of failure and once we estimate the probability of failure, we can also estimate the reliability. So, let us investigate how we can move further and find out the expression for probability of failure and reliability. So, we will do that using first two moments that we have already studied in the theory of probability. So, in this case we have a limit state which is the difference between capacity and demand and g x equal to 0 is the limit state which has capacity for the time being let us consider both capacity and demand to be normal with their respective mean and standard deviation that defines the uncertainty associated with capacity and demand. So, in that case our aim is to find out the PDF for this limit state g. Once we do that we can actually find out the probability of failure which is when g x is less than 0 and that we can easily find out integrating this PDF from minus infinity to 0. Effectively this will be phi of minus mu g by sigma g if you can recall our discussion on random variables and their probability density functions. So, for standard normal CDF defined by this capital phi if we estimate from minus infinity to 0. So, we put here 0 minus mu g by sigma g which ultimately gives us minus mu g by sigma g. Now, if you look at this mu g and sigma g they have the same unit and therefore, it is a non-dimensional number and then we can define probability of failure as phi of minus beta where beta is the non-dimensional number. Now, this beta is nothing but the ratio of mean and standard deviation. It was first proposed by Cornell and therefore, we call it Cornell's reliability index. If you recall in case of deterministic design we define factor of safety which is also a non-dimensional number and which should be more than 1 always to ensure safety. In this case we have reliability index which is defined by beta as the ratio of mean and standard deviation. Now, if we see the graphical representation of this definition of reliability index, we have this PDF that defines the uncertainty associated with the limit state g x. Now, obviously, 
the mean is where we have the maximum ordinate and then this zero line actually defines the probability of failure which is defined by the area under the left hand side. So, if we consider this vertical line on the left hand side where g x is less than 0 is the region where we have failure while on the right hand side we have g x equal to 0 that defines safe region and then obviously the point of symmetry in this case that is the central point is the mean of g and then beta times sigma g is defined by this lateral shift of this mean point from the 0 position. So, that is the graphical representation of the Cornell's reliability index which was first published in this paper. So, you can also refer this paper for further details. Now, let us solve a few example. So, let us first start with a beam having length 4 meter. It is made of steel. So, the Young's modulus follows normal distribution with the parameters given. Then the beam which is simply supported at two ends, it is having a point load at the center and an UDL over the complete length of the beam. Now, the loads are also defined, the UDL is also following normal distributions and then the point load at the center also following normal distribution. We have to design the beam against serviceability limit state of L by 250 and then with a target P f which is given in this case that is 10 to the power minus 3. So, if you see the design, it is a simply supported beam which is having maximum deflection at the center that is the mid span and we know the central deflection is P L cube by 40 A T i plus 5 W L to the power 4 by 384 E i. This comes from structural analysis that we have already studied in our undergraduate curriculum. This is a linear structure. So, theory of superposition is valid. We can separately consider the point load and the UDL and for each of them we find out what is the central deflection and then we add them together to find the total central deflection. Now, in this expression you can see we have altogether three random variables P, then W and then E Young's modulus. So, to estimate the first two moments we use Taylor series expansion and variance algebra and we have already derived that quantity. So, mu g and sigma g we can find out from these two expression on your screen. So, the mean deflection at the center will be when we estimate this delta by substituting the mean value of the respective random variables. In this case, random variables are p, w and Young's modulus. Now, if you look at this expression, we have i which is the moment of inertia and in this design we have to actually find out what should be i and then accordingly we have to select the cross section. So, we have mean of the central deflection in terms of i and then we estimate the first differentiation with respect to p, w and e and then each of them is again coming in terms of i. Then we estimate the variance of the central deflection and that turns out to be this expression on your screen. So, then ultimately we can find out the variance of the central deflection and which is again you can see 1.203 into 10 to the power 15 by i square. Then our allowable deflection in these case is given as L by 250 which is 16 millimeter. Then obviously we assume the central deformation follows normal distribution. So, probability of failure will be defined when the delta is more than the allowable deformation that is in this case 16 millimeter. So, probability of delta greater than 16 millimeter is nothing but 1 minus capital phi of delta minus mu delta divided by sigma delta. So, if you put all the expressions then we have only unknown in this equation and which is i. So, if you solve this equation we get moment of inertia is 3.59 into 10 to the power 7 millimeter to the power 4. So, once we select a beam cross section that gives a moment of inertia of this much, then we ensure under the given level of uncertainty, we achieve a target probability of failure of 10 to the power minus 3. So, this design is based on serviceability limit state. So, let us continue. If we use the same beam and then we find out the required moment capacity for 
the same loading as well as PF. So, again in this case because this is a simply supported beam, the bending moment is maximum at the center. So, again we find out the maximum bending moment which in this case is W L square by 8 plus P L by 4. Again we use theory of superposition and then we find out contribution from the point load also from the U D L and then add them up to find out the total maximum bending moment at the center. Then again we use algebra of variance and then estimate what is the mean of the moment at the center where in this expression of capital M we put the mean values of the respective random variable. In this case we have two random variables one is W and another is P and then we get the estimate of mean as 64 E 6 Newton millimeter or in other words 64 kilo Newton meter. Then we repeat the same exercise and we estimate the variance which you can see on your screen and then we can evaluate the standard deviation. In this case it is 4.61 kilo Newton meter. So, we have a target probability of failure as 10 to the power minus 3. So, again because the expression for probability of failure and then we wish to estimate the moment capacity and then we solve this expression on your screen and then we estimate the moment capacity in this case it is 78.24 kilo Newton meter. So, for the same beam we solve the problem where we consider limit state against serviceability and then also the moment capacity of the beam. And in this case we use algebra of variance. So, if we see that the algebra of variance we can use to bypass the expression that we derived at the beginning involving the PDF of capacity and demand which in many cases in most of the cases actually is very difficult to estimate. Let us continue our discussion. So, we have a beam it is a reinforced concrete beam and the cross section you can see on your screen. So, it is made of M25 concrete and AP 415 steel. So, the dimension in this case B and D both of them are normal following this uncertainty defined by their mean and standard deviation as you can see on your screen. So, we have to evaluate the first two moment of resistance and then determine the reliability if we apply an external bending moment of 700 kilo Newton meter. So, we know that moment of resistance of a RCC beam is given by this expression. We are familiar with this expression which involves F C K B X U. I assume that the meaning of these variables are already known to us. So, the moment of resistance can be further simplified and the expression you can see on your screen for Fe 415 steel. Now, if you see we have two random variables one is B another is D and then we estimate the first moment of MR and that we can easily find out using the mean value of the two random variables in this case B and D and then we can estimate what is the mean moment of resistance in this case it is 676.2 kilo Newton meter. Then we differentiate M R with respect to B and D and then we find out respective expressions which is finally used to estimate the second moment and in this case we can estimate the variance of M R using this expression which in this case leads to sigma of m r to be 13.42 kilo Newton meter. Then our applied bending moment is 700 kilo Newton meter. So, we can find out the reliability of this design where reliability is that the applied moment that is 700 kilo Newton minus 676.2 divided by 13.2 this expression we evaluate and then phi of this expression gives us the reliability which in this case is 0.9619. So, in this case we estimate the reliability of the design. So, let us continue further. Now, we have again a simply supported beam that has axial loading P and a point loading which is in the vertical direction at the center which is P of B. Now, in this case 
At the mid section, the beam experiences moment as well as axial compression, both of them are normal and their respective mean and standard deviation are given. Also the cross section area of this beam is given along with the section modulus. Then we have to find out the reliability against a capacity of 4.75 MPa. Now in the earlier problems, we did not consider correlated random variables, but in this case we have two loads which are random variable which are also correlated and the correlation coefficient is 0.75 and z is statistically independent. So, in this case again we start with the expression of stress that is at the midpoint we have applied bending moment m and axial force p. So, m by z plus p by a is basically the expression of stress. Then we can estimate the mean of this stress which is very simple. We need to put the mean value of the respective random variables. So, in this case we have three random variables m, p and z. So, we put their respective mean values and estimate the mean stress level is 3.81 mp. Then we differentiate s with respect to random variables and then we find out their expressions to estimate the standard deviation. Because we have a correlated case, we have an extra term that defines the correlation coefficient between the two random variable m and p in this case. So, using this expression, we can find out what is the sigma of s, so which is square root of this 0.525. And then if you plot that PDF, you can see the pink line on your screen defines the stress level where the mean is around 3.81 MPa and then it has a standard deviation square is 0.525. Now, this dotted line that shows the capacity we have in this case it is 4.75 MP. Obviously, when this applied stress goes beyond this and we have a failure, so we can define failure and then we can also find out reliability and in this case if we estimate reliability which is 0.9633. So, if we go back to the same example where we have a cantilever beam, this we studied earlier with a point load at the free end and the limit state is defined using the maximum deformation at the free end which is in this case L by 325 minus the applied deformation at the free end that is P L cube by 3 i. Now, we define limit state G x equal to 0 which has in this case capacity minus demand equal to 0. So, if we change this format of limit state, then in reality the problem does not change. So, we can cast the limit state. In this case, we have c minus d equal to 0, that means c equal to d, which defines the limit state. Then we can reformat this expression, and in this case, we have 1 minus d by c equal to 0, which comes from the same expression for the same problem where the uncertainty remains also same. So, there are different formats we can adopt. In this case, the third expression you can see is c by d minus 1 equal to 0, which also comes from the same expression c minus d equal to 0. Now, if we write the limit state in different formats, the problem does not change. And therefore, even before solving the problem, we can expect that whichever format we adopt and solve the reliability problem our estimation of reliability should remain same. So, that is what we are going to investigate next. So, what we will do? We have already solved this problem against serviceability. So, we will recast that in a different format and we will investigate whether we get the same probability of failure or reliability, whichever way we express the case. So, let us see how it goes. So, we define the beam problem where the point load is acting at the free end, I moment of inertia in this case it is deterministic and given and then we have three random variables, one is p, another is l and the Young's modulus. For each of them mean and standard deviation are given. So, let us solve this problem once we define g x equal to 0, in this case l by 325 minus p l cube by 3 i we can differentiate g x with respect to the random variables in this case p, l and e. 
So, these are different expressions we have for the slope. So, we adopt the algebra of variance and then we can estimate g of mu which is the mean of g and that turns out to be 3.1146 in this case. Then we estimate the slope at the mean by differentiating g with respect to all the random variables. In this case, we have three random variables p, l and e. So, we finally get the sigma of g which is 0 0.7831 in this case and the beta is the ratio of mean and standard deviation which in this case 3.9773. So, if we estimate the probability of failure which is phi of minus beta in this case it is 3.4851 into 10 to the power minus 5 and then we can also evaluate reliability which is 1 minus probability of failure. So, the factor of safety based design is actually replaced by this pf and once we define the problem in terms of deterministic and random variables, then using algebra of variance we can estimate the probability of failure using mean value first order second moment method. Now, this design can be repeated for a target reliability level and then as we have already discussed in the previous problem, we can select the cross section or any other design parameter to meet a target probability of failure or reliability. Now, if we consider the same problem, but in this case we change the format of the limit state which is 1 minus d by c. Then we again repeat the same procedure, but because the format of the limit state changes, obviously the slope also will change and accordingly we find out the first derivative of g with respect to p, l and e. And then again we repeat the same procedure, we find the mean of g which in this case 0 0.4049, then we find out the slope at the mean point while differentiating g with respect to p, l and e separately and then finally we estimate sigma of g in this case it is 0 0.1112 and then using these two expression we can find out beta in this case beta is 0 0.36412 sorry 3.6412 and the pf is phi of minus beta which in this case 1.3569 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, you see that the moment we change the format of the limit state earlier it was c minus d and now we have 1 minus d by c. The moment we change the format of this limit state, although the fundamental problem remains the same, it is the same beam, same po external point load acting and the nature of the limit state also remains same which is defined by the deflection at the free end. But because we change the format of the limit state in mean value first order second moment method, beta that is the estimate of a reliability index which changes earlier it was 3.9773. Now, in the new format, it is 3.6412. So, there is a significant change in the estimation of beta and obviously that is also reflected in the probability of failure. So, this is not expected because the fundamental problem remains same. So, whichever way we estimate, we should end up with the same probability of failure or otherwise the estimation has some error. So, if you further investigate the same problem and in this case we have the same beam, same loading pattern, but in this case instead of deflection we consider the bending at the fixed end and we investigate the plastic design of this beam where the support moment is defined and then the section modulus and yield stress f y, they are stati statistically independent and they are mean and standard deviation are given in this table on your screen. Now, we will repeat this process for normal as well as log normal PDF. So, we will first consider these two random variable following normal distribution and solve the problem using the first format capacity minus demand in this case f y times z is the capacity minus applied bending moment which is equal to 0. So, then we follow the same procedure. We differentiate g with respect to random variable and then first find out mean and then standard deviation 
Then using Cornell's definition of reliability index, we estimate beta, which in this case 3.97. So, this was when the variable was normal, but we now move over to log normal case. So, in case of log normal, both capacity and demand are all positive and the probability of failure is defined by this expression capital P is defined by C by D is less than equal less than 1 and then which is equal to capital phi of this expression on your screen which comes from the basic definition of log normal distribution where it has two parameters and you can see on your screen uh, the two parameters for capacity which is correlated to the sample mean and standard deviation through this relation expressions you can see on your screen. Similarly, the demand is also related to the sample mean and sample standard deviation. This delta c and delta d is the it is the coefficient of variation that means it is the ratio of standard deviation and mean. Now, I leave this as an exercise for you. So, take it as a home task just try to derive this expression for log normal distribution the probability of failure will be given by this expression. Then if we have a case where coefficient of variation is less than 0.3, we can further simplify this expression of Pf and we get beta which is equal to ln time ln of mu d by mu c divided by square root of delta c square plus delta d square. So, we know the expression that we have already derived. So, if we put that expression for beta, we get beta to be 5.25 in this case. So, from normal to log normal, if we change the description, that also gets reflected in the estimation of beta. Now, we repeat the same procedure, but we change the format of the limit state. In this case, the new format is f y minus m by z. Now, in this new format, again we repeat the same procedure. We first consider the variables following normal distribution and then repeat the same exercise for log normal distribution. So, we start with the normal case and then we find out the first derivative with respect to f y and z and then similarly as we did in the last case we find out the mean and standard deviation. And then finally, for the normal case we estimate beta of g which in this case is 4.28. Obviously, the estimate in the previous case was 3.97. So, we can easily notice that there is a significant difference in the estimation of beta. So, you repeat the same procedure for the log normal case and in this new format again we use the expression for beta and then in this case beta is 5.31 which earlier was 5.25. So, you can see if we change the format and adopt mean value first order second moment method our estimation of beta and obviously, uh, the probability of failure and also the reliability changes from one description to other descriptions of the limit state which comes from the same uh, basic problem where the structure, the loading pattern, boundary conditions, material property, uncertainty, everything remains same just we change the format of the limit state. and the estimation of uh, beta is affected. So, if I sum up the mean value first order second moment method, you can see on your screen this is the graphical representation of the Cornell's definition of the reliability index which is the ratio of mu g by sigma g. And then in this format when we estimate probability of failure or reliability we consider mean as our anchor point and with respect to mean, we actually estimate the reliability index. Obviously, there is no guarantee that in real case, mean will be the reference point, the design point can be anywhere and obviously, if we use uh, mean as our reference point, we expect uh, there will be some error because of this assumption. Then, in this process, when we adopt variance algebra, we expand g x in terms of Taylor series expansion, which is an infinite series, but we truncate that series up to first order term. So, we consider first two terms and then truncate it and thereby we linearize the Taylor series expansion. Obviously, this linearization around obviously mean point 
which is the reference in this case, uh, it brings in a significant amount of error when we estimate the reliability or probability of failure. And finally, we have seen that if we change the format of the limit state and then although the problem remains same, just by changing the format of the limit state it gives us different estimate of probability of failure and beta. And this is what is called the lack of invariance. This is one of the major drawback of this model and therefore, we now need to improve this mean value first order second moment method and that is what we investigate further to develop a more accurate model so that we can relax this assumption. We will no longer use mean as the reference point and then obviously, if we change the format of the limit state no matter which format we use, so long the basic definition, the problem description remains same, we should estimate the same level of reliability that we will further study in the following lectures. Thank you very much. Thank you.